Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. From this point forward, your life is about to change, and we're going to redo your life or actually help you remaster your life. That's what he does for lots of people, and he's a great guy. You're going to learn a lot today. He's a motivational speaker, a life coach, and he is Lucas, and he's with us on the program today. Welcome. How are you? I'm good. See, how are you? I'm very well. I'm I, I'm intrigued. You do a lot. And I yeah. love the concept of remastering your life. In my mind, it's almost as if we're saying, take control of your life. Finally, take control of your life. Do I have that right? Absolutely. You know, I tossed around what to call my company for a while. And then something popped up on iTunes. It was like digitally, digitally remastered track. And I was like, remaster mm. that brilliant and so yes no i definitely focus on helping people compartmentalize and dissect their life and rebuild it so that's one of my greatest strengths and missions you know i never looked at it that way in terms of music but whenever you look at a, a song or an album that's been remastered it's the same but it's better it's there's more clarity there's more definition within it um, so yeah, why not do that with our lives? <laughs> Makes total sense. Well, thank you for the support and the encouragement for my creative process. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and you know what? Whenever I see, let's say I'm, you know, I'm I'm in my playlist and um uh, an old album comes up and it says remaster, right away I'm like, oh yeah, this is this is even better than the original. You know, sometimes the original is good, but more times than not, they remastered it for a reason. Um yes. let's talk about your journey. How did you how did you begin to wind up where you are here? So, you know, I grew up in a very um, strong Christian household, non-dominational. We believed in like the, the the gifts of the spirit and like really using your your story to, at the time, you know, basically do mission work for, for Christ. And when I became a teacher as an adult, I kind of used my career of teaching kids as my my mission of like teaching people how to love themselves, how to deal with grief, how to process and really motivate themselves to get their, their goals done, their mission. And then um, I ended up finding Reiki in 2011 and started doing just energy work on myself. And then about five or six years later, I, <laughs> I had been coaching for that point for like 15 years. And a friend of mine was looking for relationship advice. I'm always that friend. I'm always the relationship friend. <laughs> it helps everyone find the right thing to do, what choices to make, what not to say, what to say. Um, and anyway, he's telling me about this problem. I was like, you know what? Just leave it alone. Wait until the weekend. Wait till Friday. I promise they're going to call you. Well, like, sh should I text something? I don't think I meant no, no, don't don't do anything. Just, just wait until Friday. And then I saw him on Sunday and he goes, it happened just like you said, you should be a psychic. And I was like, I, I don't read the future. I don't believe in that kind of stuff. And he mm -hmm. kept pushing me. And so I ended up getting a side job as a psychic reader about six years ago. And I just noticed within a year of doing that work, it was just coaching. You know, you're, you're looking into someone's life intuitively. You're picking up on things in the story that are not being fully given to you and then giving advice. And so that coaching career just kind of took like a side turn from gymnastics and dance into personal interpersonal development. And then about a year and a half ago, the business just kept getting so much bigger and I was able to support myself on just that income that I left my teaching job and started doing wow. this full time. And so um, I'm not really sure how I got here. It all kind of <laughs> makes sense. Like when you look at it backwards, but when you're when I was looking at it at the time, I didn't see any of these steps leading me here. I didn't ever intend to be a coach or an energy practitioner or a psychic medium. That was never, <laughs> that was never my goal. It just kind of happened. So. But you truly feel that you're intuitive. Um, I'm very intuitive. You know, when, even when I was a kid, when teachers would be talking it was like I could hear what they were saying. I could see what was on the board. But in the back of my mind, there'd be other words coming in. I'd be seeing things like on a chalkboard inside my head. I'd be hearing stuff. Um, and so I, yes, I, I actually kind of have a hard time having full-on conversations with people. Where I remember 100% of what 
said, because I'm so focused on everything else, their tone, their rhythm, how their body's getting, even their breath, how they're exhaling. It all kind of tells a bigger story and that's using your intuition. I mean, there's two sides of intuition. There's the creative crazy side and there's the logical side. So, I mean, it's, they're kind of weaving together. It's logic and intuition. I want to pivot just for a second from what we're talking about. I mean, it's all related. How do you, and I feel that all of us have a level of intuition. Yes. Call it a gut feeling, whatever you want to put a label on it as how do you tune into it? How do I tune into it? You know, um, the easiest way that I tune into what's happening with someone's story is before someone shows up for a session or before I go on TikTok Live, whatever it is, I check in with my energy body first. And it's, 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 it's in Reiki. There are nine major chakra points. And I check in with my body first and see where I am. And as soon as that person shows up, something will shift there. There's a feeling that I get and it's in different parts of my body. And then I use my logical brain mm-hmm. and go based on this chakra, what's happening right now. There's sexual dissatisfaction. This person's not getting their needs met. They haven't been talking to their partner. All these kind of tensions show up. And then I start talking about it and we're having a conversation. Those tensions start relieving. And then as soon as the client leaves, I recheck back in with myself. So I always tell people, if you want to be able to read someone else, you have to know yourself first. You have to know where you are to be able to separate where they are. Does that make sense? It does. And I guess it comes in to alignment when somebody says, well, you can't really love somebody else and unless you truly love yourself. That, that is 100%. You can only meet someone where you've met yourself. Yeah, correct. I've never heard it put that way. <laughs> that's even- I, well, it, it, it's kind of it's like- but That's love- great. You know, it's levels of intimacy you have with yourself and. Interesting. So would you say based on on just what you said that you're not going to be able to give somebody or have that type of relationship past where you are with yourself? Mm -hmm. And that's challenging Uh, because you need to figure out where you are, where you are. Well, and knowing for me, my, my inner journey that happened when I first started doing Reiki just for myself for the first five or six years, it was unpacking all of my old wounds, all of my old traumas, knowing all my triggers, knowing what it is that I'm capable of giving and knowing what it is I need in all types of relationships. And yeah, when you know those things, you can show up with it. And yeah, I mean, you, you, you literally cannot give some, someone something you don't have. So if you don't love yourself, you can't love them. If you don't appreciate yourself, you can't appreciate them. You can say it, but the feeling mm-hmm. is not there with it, which is what yep. we want, the feeling <laughs> for sure. Would you say along the way you're wired or were wired maybe as a people pleaser? Me? Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, so interesting you get there. Um, yes, I grew up in a single parent household. Um, there were three kids, three different dads. My mom was working all the time. And I learned very, very young that if things were not in the right place, mom would be upset. And that could be her just going to her room and being quiet. It could be her getting into a bit of a yelling fit, whatever it was. So I, very young age, yes, did everything to make sure that teachers, parents, people would just shut up. It's like, I didn't care. I'm like, can you just shut up and leave me alone? Like, what do I need to do to make you quiet right now? Um, and that also is a big part of where my intuition comes from, how I learned mm. how to read people. <laughs> yes. It, you know what, it, it, Lucas, it sounds like you learned how to read people because you had to learn how to read people <laughs> yep. to, to move Absolutely. your life forward and, and uh, maybe prevent yourself from, from either getting hurt, dealing with issues and things like that. Mm-hmm. Well, and yeah, I think a lot of my relationship coaching came from inspecting myself from about 16 to 30. (laughs) I inspected who I was and how I was showing up. And all of a sudden I realized all these, they're not flaws and they're not false. They're choices. They're unknowledged choices where you're just kind of doing something out of habit. Um, And when I started realizing those things, I was like, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Do that. Say that. Make sure you have this list over here. Like, hold them to a boundary. Here's the rules. And again, it was me getting myself to a more healed place that allowed me to help other people. 
Tell me about the process. When you're going to help somebody, when you're going to work uh, with somebody on a coaching level, where does it start? Where does it start? Um, it usually starts in a consultation. You know, someone will reach out to me and say that they're, they're looking for services. I'll ask them a few basic questions like, how did you hear about me? Where did you find me? Um, and then I set up an appointment to talk to them. It can be anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. Um, and <laughs> it's always fun to explain to people. Um, like I will sit down with a note card knowing very little about that person. And I'll just start writing words like single words, ideas, colors. I just sit there and kind of creatively flow through it. And then when they call, I used to have a script. But now I don't use a script. I just let my brain do it. But I start asking questions about their life and what it is they're looking for right now and what blocks they've already experienced, what challenges they've already experienced, how they tried to take those on. And after experimenting with all that, I will take it out of the out of the consultation and sit down with myself again and go, what can I do to help this person? What tools do I have that they could use? And then I'll call that person back use the next day. Um, and I'll say, this is what I think we should do. Let's do four sessions, come once a week for a month. Let's see where you are at that point. And I tell them, I'm planning on teaching you these things and these things, and you need to promise you're going to do these and these. I'm very meticulous with clients. Like when they sign up, there's a, there's a list of things we're going to do along the way. It's kind of like an accountability check-in. Um, and then we start. And then a session it depends on who I'm attracting. Some people are very mental and just want to talk about stuff the whole time. <laughs> um, some people want to like get on the table and do a Reiki energy session. Some people want to do card readings. It really kind of depends on the person and where they are inside their journey. Um, but usually it's package based stuff. Um, right now I'm really focusing on group work. So I have two programs right now. One is for teen development and one is for energy work, which is the Reiki mastership program. And I'm moving my business into more group dynamics. I think it helps. Um, I like individual sessions and even inside those group packages, each of the people that are signed up have individuals with me, but we're on a journey together hmm. and I like teaching group classes a lot. I, I, I'm actually surprised because when, when I left dance and gymnastics, I was done coaching groups. I was so done dealing with groups and kids. <laughs> so over it. And now like a year and a half, two years in, I'm kind of circling back in and students have been calling me for choreography and for dance lessons. And so I'm still in the mix of it, but that's why the, the motivational speaking it's just something I do. Like if I've been doing that for so long, cause that's like competitions and stuff, kids get all kinds of ways, parents get all kinds of ways and you got to say stuff to unprogram whatever it is that's coming up inside of them. So I'm a computer programmer for, for, for the mind. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm, yeah. I'm good at deleting shit. <laughs> that's <laughs> 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 well you know what that really there's a lot of stuff i'd like to delete in my life and uh and and you know what that kind of sounds like the traumas that we dealt with when we were probably younger which kind of governs our life that's our gps along the way um is that what you help people figure out as well you know why do i do this why do i act that way why do i keep attracting the same type of person so something I don't, I don't tell people very often that happens in sessions. Um, I'm good at role playing. So I, again, when you zoom out of your life far enough, you've been every possible person. You've been the bad guy. You've been the jerk. You've been the liar. You've been all these people. And I love role playing with clients where we start finding out what the issues are. And then I say, okay, let's role play. I'm going to be a, a new woman in your life and you're going to be you. And let's start doing, I'll say stuff deliberately triggering to them. To, to see where those wounds are because, you know, this is kind of off topic, but not, as you said, um, I don't think any of us can get through life unscathed. Like we're all, no matter how beautiful your childhood was or how great your parents were, what school you went to, you were traumatized in some way, something, a disappointment, a misunderstanding, your brain, it kind of does things automatically, especially when you're young before your frontal cortex develops. And I just, I love, finding those places in people's timelines that 
it's a wound, usually around rejection. It's almost always around rejection. Some way they didn't feel accepted by something or someone. And you find that rejection and you go, actually, let's find out why this is a good thing. You know, what do you know about that person now? They're not good for you. If you hadn't learned this, would you have gone over here to try this? If you hadn't done this, would you have bought in that course from that mentorship? If you hadn't done this and when you zoom out far enough, I'm always talking about zooming out. <laughs> when you zoom out far enough, all the stuff on the timeline is just so minuscule. And because we all share that trauma pathway, when you stop thinking you're special because you're traumatized, that also helps. Like you're not special for being traumatized. You, you, you were traumatized in a specific way, but you're still meant to move beyond it and move through it. And hmm. getting people out of the victim state, because <laughs> I'm the last person you want a victim, a victim talking to, I will somehow make it about you and how it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so you have an interesting way of looking at things. And I totally agree. Like when you zoom out and I actually did a timeline, I guess you call it therapy. It was a oh hypnotherapy session where, um, where we zoomed out and now you're taking a look at it. You're looking down on your life and essentially what the uh, hypnotherapist was doing was to find the first time. And, and what, what the deal was, it was to figure out the five uh, negative emotions so why are you angry? Why are you sad? And on and on. What's the first rem uh, memory you have of being angry? What is it? And you try and think back to the beginning. It's like, hmm, I'm not really sure. All right, we're going to zoom out a little bit more. Now we're going to take a look at you know a broader view of it. And once you find that first memory and they work with hypnotherapy, it essentially erases the rest for the rest of your life. Doesn't mean you're not going to feel anger ever again or sadness, but all of that stuff on your timeline. And I, I'm using this as an example because you said timeline and I yeah. see, you know, I see the picture. You know, I, uh, I, I think our life is the, the, the metaphor and the visual of a tree is just the best thing because like you're, you're putting seeds down and everything that comes out of that seed are like you said, they're echoes in the timeline. And if you go back and just pull the seed out or uh, and sometimes you don't even need to pull it out. Like sometimes it's just the way you're looking at it. Like there's a perspective thing that's happening where you think there's this big negative, scary monster in there when really it was just your doorway to opportunity to deeper self understanding, self awareness, like more, you can give more compassion to people when you've gone through stuff. Like no one wants to be preached at by some flawless person in the pulpit. You know, they want someone who's been out there in the war fighting sure. the battle, had to kill a few people and got cut up and <laughs> lost the leg. You know, it, it's hard. <laughs> and so, yeah. But we've all gone through it. If anybody says, I don't have any traumas. Well, okay. Then we, we probably have to, define the word trauma yeah uh because a lot of people think car accident no that's not what we're talking about you could have heard something when you were five years old passing yeah. the kitchen and wasn't even directed at you you internalized it bam you're stuck with it and and it's basically screwed up your life from that point forward right well and i think a lot of people didn't have the best parenting dynamics to watch either sure and so we, we mirror, like you were talking about mirroring just now, we mirror what it is that we see in our environment. Like you can't, you can't pull it out of thin air. <laughs> like you can't, if all you know is A, you can't just make up B. There's just, just A. You have to be shown B and then go, oh, I like this more. And then, oh, here's C. That's even better. And you keep upgrading based on your, your knowledge and your experience. And so, yeah. It, 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 but it's funny. We always go back to the things that are comfortable. Yeah. Why is life. that? Why is that? Because we have fear and we don't want to confront the fear and the negativity and the comfortable thing is, is a known. It's a known. To freeze and pretend it doesn't exist. No, uh. <laughs> definitely not. And like you said, you know, we probably didn't have the best parent role models, not taking anything away from our parents, mm -hmm. but Correct. they're just doing what their parents told them to do and parents before that doesn't mean it was right, but it is what it is. But all we're going to do is just continue that cycle. Well, and I don't know if you've read um, The Fourth Turning. It's a book. I've not read the book. I've watched lots of videos on it. And it talks about how generations build upon each other. And the biggest thing I'm studying right now is how the GI generation bred the boomers to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then the boomers raise the X's, X's to Y's and Y's to Z's. And it's like mental health and just like relationship health healthy relationships were not 
talked about or discussed very much from like 1930 until like basically 2005. It's like there were so many couples that were together out of obligation or they didn't break up because what would the neighbors think? And that that whole like false premise society was there for like 50 years. And then it was to me, it was the millennials that, that came in and were like, no, this is not healthy toxicity, narcissism. Like they started learning all this stuff about psychology. As Absolutely. I, tongue. I, I totally agree. And even if you go back, I don't know, go, go 30 years back and say the words mental health. Oh, whoa, yep. whoa, whoa can't talk about that. Whoa. Drugs? Are you on drugs? Is everything okay? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like the word Prozac. Prozac. <laughs> Yeah. And now guess what? You know, probably three quarters of the population are on antidepressants and that's okay. Uh, But maybe there's other ways to deal with it. I, so (laughs) I was labeled everything you can imagine when I was a kid, ADD, ADHD, OCD, autism spectrum disorder, ODD. Like they gave me all these letters and it wasn't until I was an adult that I started medicating myself for it. My mom refused to medicate me. And I went from, it started with Adderall that went into Klonopin because I was having anxiety attacks that went into Xanax so I could sleep at night. That went into muscle relaxers because I was having body pains that went into Tramadol because I was having like general, like boom, boom aches. I was on five or six medications a day just to normalize myself. Um, And when I found Reiki, Reiki, it was over a period of like a year. I gave up all those prescriptions. I stopped smoking cigarettes and it was just because I found a way to connect to my body. And like the more mm. we tune into ourself, the less we're distracted and bothered by what's outside of ourself, which includes self-medication, <laughs> whether it's from a doctor or you're getting weed from the, from the guy down the street, when you're self-medicating, it's because you're reaching outside of yourself for a solution when the solution was never out there. Never, and then the problem wasn't out there either. It's all it's in here, and I, mm. I, I made a comment a minute ago about how we have automatic responses. I didn't realize some of the things that I just assumed about parents. Like I assumed my mom was a certain way. I assumed my grandma was. So I, I made assumptions. No one ever told me. And then when they finally said, "Actually, I don't make that from scratch. Actually, I was never bothered by that." I'm like, "Oh." You weren't. And it's like, that's why I'm always telling people, you don't really know yourself until you're old enough to have a full functioning brain and you can go back and check through everything that you did before that point, before your brain came on. What were you thinking about? What were you saying? What were you doing? What were your behaviors? Because all those behaviors were probably automatic. Yeah. They were automatic. And it's, it's a beautiful journey unpacking yourself. I look back and, and the number one thing I say is, when, to my younger self, if I could tell myself, why the hell did I worry about what people thought? Why? Oh, if I could have changed that, <laughs> life would be radically different. But that's the way we're wired. Do you feel, Lucas, that many of us feel that we're not good enough? I like, think that I, everyone generally? has a foster inside their head. Every person on this entire planet, from the most successful to the worst F up in the world. (laughs) All of us have an imposter in our head. Um, Someone that shows up and says things. And I always tell people like the imposter usually whispers in your ear, like he'll come in and go, you're not really good enough to do this to that person. Mm, Do you have enough experience for this? Remember what happened last time? Like that, that person. And I still, at least once a day, I hear that person show up and I actually turn as if he's standing right here and say something like, thank you so much for saying that it has no relevancy to what I'm doing right now, but thank you for being here. And, and you can, back. and you I'm, can leave, you can leave now. <laughs> yeah. So I, there's, yeah. There's a, there's a song by uh, Billy Joel came out in the seventies. It's called the stranger. The album was called a stranger. Look at the lyrics. Cause it's kind of what you're talking about where the, the mask sure. comes off and you know, that we show ourselves and then we don't even know who we are. Um, it's a pretty big song, and uh, it's interesting when you look at the lyrics on it. Uh, we're just about out of time. I want to share with yeah, everybody, yeah. yeah, how how we find you, how we find you, how the process starts. Is it a free consult? Yes, the consultation is free. Um, I'm on. If you if you go to Facebook, 
Instagram, TikTok is my favorite one. So just be known, TikTok's my favorite one. And YouTube, all of them are under Remastering Your Life. So, so if you go and look up Remastering Your Life, you'll find a ton of content that can be, it can be based on Reiki, psychology. I have random days where a download comes in. I think to myself, a lot of people struggle with this. And I'll release a 30 second video explaining, hey, is this a pain in your ass? Do this instead. Um, I also do, I, I do live readings on TikTok. So if anyone's ever wanted to like test out my intuitive abilities, wow. please come to a live session on TikTok. They're a lot of fun. Um, Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays are my five work days. And usually three or four of those between 8 and 11 p.m. Central Time, I'll, I'll hop on and I do free readings and paid readings and energy work for people. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. My TikTok is where it's at. I love that, that, that cool. place. <laughs> oh, I'm definitely going to check it out. And maybe next time we get together, we could look at uh, maybe have you pull some cards on me or somebody else. Um, any vibes? Totally. I'd be totally into that. Oh, yeah. I, and, and I am I am fully transparent. If you you know say something and I, I need to validate it, no matter what it is, I'm going to do it because <laughs> that's how awesome. That's I am. Yeah. Wow. Uh, pull cards for Steve Harper? He's going my resume. <laughs> I read Steve Harper's cards. <laughs> I remastered Steve Harper. Uh, what's your website, Lucas? Uh, remasteringyourlife.com. Everything cool. is remastering your life. <laughs> Real good. So. Uh, fantastic talking with you and love your viewpoint and your honesty and your transparency on uh, on everything. And definitely looking forward next time we get a chance to get together. Thank you, Steve. I'll see you, I think, next week at the same time. So, awesome. yeah, we have are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.